Hey there, I'm Ryan. Welcome to today's acrylic landscape lesson. All of the tools and materials will be listed in the video description. And if you'd like help with the drawing process, I will have the traceable up over on Patreon along with the reference photo for color matching. With that said, this channel is predominantly community funded. So if you feel like you're enjoying, you're having fun, you're learning things, do consider checking out the Patreon. Up there, we do have a lot of fun stuff on top of the traceables and reference photos, like that of access to the polls, my collection of eBooks, our private Facebook group, bonus lessons, and a lot more. So a bunch of fun stuff up there. Do check it out if you're interested. But with that, let's jump into it and have some fun. We are going to begin here today with a 9 by 12 inch canvas and a 1 inch flat headed brush. I'm going to dip the bottom third of this brush into a little bit of water. This is going to condense our bristles and allow our paint to stay wet for a longer period of time. So we'll take our 1 inch flat headed brush and grab quite a bit of our titanium white, moving that out to a clean spot on our palette. Then we'll grab about one third that in our cadmium yellow deep hue. You could also use a regular cadmium yellow. The deep hue is just a little bit warmer, a little bit darker naturally. And we often don't want to darken yellows with something like a Mars black because they kind of turn into a green. That said, we'll test this on our reference photo. And as you can see, it is far too bright and not saturated enough. So we'll double the amount of yellow that we incorporated, starting to look significantly more saturated. We'll test that. Yeah, again, getting closer, definitely better than that, but not quite there yet. So we'll interject a little bit of red because I do feel like that yellow that we see on the reference photo is actually a bit more of an orange. So we'll just work that in. Give that a test. Grab more red. And it's really trial and error, especially when you just begin your painting. So we're going to begin by taking that nice bright yellow that we have and we'll go down to the bottom of our cloud line right here. And I'll start working that right around what will be some very large, thick purple clouds. I'm also going to be working along the side of our sailboat. And then once I have that edge worked in, I do quite a large movement up here. You can see that I have quite a bit of paint, really trying to get a nice thick coverage. Often you can kind of tell if somebody's new to painting by just how thick their applications are. I think initially we're a little worried but the longer you paint, the more comfortable you get with it. And we really do want to ensure that none of the canvas is showing through. When we have just the pigment and the white of the canvas can't be seen through it, the colors generally look a lot better. And so I'm going back over a couple of areas. We will do multiple layers through just about everything. But there we have a nice base. Now I'm going to take off the excess pigment and we'll grab that really nice pinkish red that we rendered. Now I'm going to do a little bit of a cut off here. So what I'll do is I'll cut along the edges of our upper clouds and I generally begin by cutting around the edges simply because it makes our life a whole lot easier. Generally, you have the best opportunity to render sharp applications when you have a lot of pigment on your brush, when your brush is still relatively damp. And then as you run out of paint, as your brush dries, it becomes harder and harder. So I like to start when I have a lot of paint, while I have a bit of water on that brush, and then as it starts to dry, of course, as I start to run out, I move into the larger areas, like what we're doing right now, and I just kind of block in the rest. I'm also slightly overlapping our sailboat and our drawing there just because I'd rather have to go back and redraw it rather than have spots kind of in between that look a little messy and unfinished. So now 
We are starting to blend the two. I'm going to start taking that nice pink down into the yellow. We definitely need more of said pink though, so we will remix. There we go. And with this, we want some of it to be fairly loose down here. We don't want sharp applications. We want it to be nice and soft. We want the implication of these clouds in the distance. They're kind of fading off. You can see in these new applications, I'm working very softly with my brush. I'm not trying to get a hard line at all. There we go. And I'm using this as a cutoff point because we have a fairly opaque cloud right here, which will essentially separate our sky and by compartmentalizing different portions of our sky, we can ensure that we don't kind of accidentally bite off more than we can chew initially and end up trying to mix a really large area that just becomes a little frustrating. So whenever working in large skies, look for kind of breaks in said skies. And said breaks are generally there because of trees, mountains, or here opaque clouds. And then work on the areas separately. That way it's a lot less daunting. You can kind of set yourself up for success. With that, I think this is coming along really nicely. Again, you can see that I'm doing multiple layers, going back, ensuring that those blends are thick, soft at the bottom, that our edges are relatively sharp around the clouds. Continuously going back and mixing more paint. And I'm mixing more paint as we go rather than initially mixing a lot because it's going to give us really good practice and ensure that we really know how to mix those paints. So in the future, should we want to render a similar color in a painting, we'll have good practice, we'll be able to recall it, and we'll be able to remix it. So continuously going back, adjusting. You can see that I'm slowly moving away from the yellow in the mix, but I do think I should a little bit more and then I slowly add definition to these softer clouds if I feel they need it. There we go. That said, really like how this is turning out. I think we will probably let it dry, maybe do a second layer, and then we'll come back in and work on the top. Now, while I wait for this top portion to dry, what I'm going to do is take slightly more titanium white Work that into our yellow mixture here. Get a nice even application. And then I'm going to head in to this little opening that we have in between our purple clouds. And we'll apply that. It is a little bit brighter because it's closer to the bottom. But I also want to ensure that it's cohesive. So I'm going to take just a little bit of this and blend it from the bottom upwards. You can overlap your purple clouds in this process. We did want to do more layering anyway. And I think the added contrast will be really nice. There we go. Again, as I blend up, I'm very soft with my brush. That way I don't accidentally kind of end up with anything uh, that's more of a hard stroke. Generally you get those really noticeable brush strokes when you apply a lot of pressure or when you have too much paint on your brush. So we're just being careful. Then I'll do another little layer here just to make sure that it too is nice and thick. There we go. So now we're going to head back into our palette with, again, that one inch flat headed brush. However, now we have a brilliant purple on the palette, and this is going to be great for our clouds here, here, and right up here, despite the fact that that's much more desaturated. So with that, we're going to need to take this color and apply that to the bottom of our sky, then we'll blend it into a new purple, which we'll create here. So let's grab a quite a bit of this. Let's move it over right beside our last mixture, that way we can see what they'll be like together, like we would over there on the actual painting. 
We'll grab quite a bit of titanium white because I think it does need to be a little bit brighter, but more importantly, we need to desaturate it. Then we'll grab some Mars black, about an equal amount to the titanium white. Give that a go. And as you can see, it's already still far too saturated. We'll do a little test. Yeah, it's not there. So we'll add more titanium white. We'll add again an equal mixture of that Mars black. And Mars black is generally a bit of a stronger pigment than titanium white, so you might end up with something that's a little bit more dark as you go. But we'll see if that becomes an issue. So I apply that. I actually, I really like that color. I, I think it needs to be a little bit darker yet again, but I think that it's going to be very pretty. So more Mars black. You can see that I'm flipping my brush as I mix as well. That way I don't have some areas that are a little bit brighter, a little bit darker. That way one side of the brush doesn't have brighter or darker paint. Let's add a little bit more purple. A little bit more titanium white. Again, a lot of it's trial and error. And I think that right there, again, while not exactly what we have on the reference photo, I think I like it a lot. So we'll give this a go, especially once we start blending it with that. Let's mix more of our pink. I did not take the purple off of my brush. Generally you should, but I felt like we didn't have enough to the point where it would really make an impact. And we'll just fix this up and then we'll head back over to the canvas. So now we're going to be taking that fairly large amount of paint that we just mixed because we do have a lot of area to cover and we'll head in right here on the right hand side of the sailboat. We'll cut in along the side and then we'll start to move upwards. That said, I think I should probably fix my easel. So I'm going to do that as soon as I do a slight blend back down here. And I do the slight blend down into this, just in case the color is a little bit different. And as you can see it is, it gets slightly more dark, slightly more purple as we move up, just naturally. So it was okay that I did have a little bit of purple in my mix when I went to recreate this color. And we're just going to blend it back down by creating a wet in a dry blend. So I'm essentially applying the paint, going in with a very damp brush, and then softly working back and forth until we have a smooth blend. With that, I am going to fix the easel and then we'll get back to it. Okay, so now back to our mixing and application. I am going to head over to the left-hand side. We will craft the sharper edge of the cloud and we'll add in all of the little bumps and fun pieces to the cloud in just a minute, but I want to start by just getting as much paint as we can on here. We will have to mix a little bit more. Shouldn't take too, too long. There we go. I do want a little bit of purple in it, especially as we start to move up. A Little bit of Mars black. Just a hint though. And there we go. That's a really nice mix. You can see that I also started to work some vertical strokes in as we got towards the boat. I try not to do that too much. And if you do it, it's okay. Just go back over it with horizontal strokes to ensure that you end up with something that's fairly cohesive movement wise. Now we're going to move to our new purple pigment. Start applying that to the top and I really like the mix of colors there. I think they'll blend quite beautifully. That said, I do need more. So, we grab some of our purple, titanium white, again about an equal mixture of the Mars black. Mix those two up. Get a fairly decent amount because we do have quite the surface area to cover up here. And I'm not too worried about the very top right now. If you feel like you're kind of pressed for time, get the edging done first while this is still wet. You can always come back up and fill that in a lot easier later on. 
That said, now that I have that applied, I'm going to start to move my paint down in a bit of a diagonal pattern. You can move in an X-shaped pattern as well. But we're just trying to take the purple that's on the top, move it farther down, and then I soften it with our horizontal strokes. We're going to create a secondary area of these purple clouds. So I'm going to leave some space between here and here. And then I'm going to soften that as well. Just like so. Looks really clean. Looks nice and thick. We have some diverse things happening within our paint. I like it a lot. Subtle. And now that I have that applied, I can head back up to the top and start applying that as well. Now it is still fairly wet, at least wet enough to work with. However, if it has dried by that point, again, you can work wet into dry by just mixing more of that paint, applying it to the canvas, taking offset paint from your brush, going back, grabbing some water, not too much, but enough to make the brush fairly damp, and then you go back in. I'm going to make this top corner a little bit darker so that we have a bit of a vignette effect, so that the eye is drawn into the middle of the piece. Let's grab some additional Mars Black for that. I didn't make it significantly darker, and I didn't want to, and I, I, I recommend doing it very gradually because it's a lot easier to make paint darker than it is to make paint brighter. Mars Black is a much stronger pigment than Titanium White, so in scenarios like this where you do want to incorporate a vignette, start with something that's not too extreme, and then slowly add to it, just like we're doing here. You can see this nice little patch of brighter purple too. I think that's a beautiful addition. In this top area, we don't want too many hard lines or real details because we don't want it to distract from the bottom area. But having little movements, soft blends like what we have is perfect. And I'm really, really happy with how this is turning out. We'll just work that in. There we go. And you may want to do another layer here if you feel like it's a little bit too thin. That's going to be up to you though. And with that, we are going to start moving onto some of our more opaque clouds. Now we're going to switch to our filbert brush. It is one third of an inch and it's fantastic because it can carry a lot of paint, but the more rounded edges are fantastic for rendering subjects like that of clouds, which we are about to embark on. So now we're going to take our filbert brush here and we'll start by grabbing some of that brilliant purple, moving it out onto the palette. All of this is dried at this point and you do want it in a fairly clean area. Now I'm also going to grab about maybe one fifth that in titanium white as I will want to desaturate this a little bit and I do want the purples to be quite a bit darker. So let's do about one third in Mars Black. Mars Black of course, just being significantly stronger and already we have something nice, dark, and desaturated. Let's give it a test. Right over there. You know what? I think already I love it. <laughs> so now jumping back into our canvas, we are going to start initially by actually working in the body of one of our larger clouds. And generally I do like to begin on the edges because that's when I can render the sharpest application, but I don't really want a hyper sharp edge on our clouds. I want something that feathers out a little bit. And to do that, often it's best to get some of that paint off of your brush first. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. And you can see that I'm avoiding portions of our drawing, which I did work back in there once the paint dried. But now that I have the majority of our paint off the brush, I'm just going to add a little bit of water, take off the excess, and then I'll come back up here. And with a stroke moving back and forth, limited amount of pressure. I start to do a blend upwards. You can see it's creating this softer application. Now you may need to go back and grab more paint 
if you end up kind of ripping off a little bit of it. We do want to be careful of that. But if we go back for more paint, we need to make sure that we don't grab too much to the point where we kind of nullify the point of initially just getting that paint off of the brush, right? We still want a minimal amount for the blend. There we go. And you know what? While I wanted this to be quite a bit darker than up there, and while it is, I think that I actually want it to be slightly brighter than what we have here. So I'm just going to finish off this little area so that it's cohesive. We'll do a secondary little cloud over there, maybe another one right down below. See that in the reference photo? I think it's a nice little detail. That said, once you've done so, I'll do a little bit of a blend upwards, as you've been doing. Just make sure that it's fully applied everywhere, that way when we start changing the color it doesn't look awkward in any one area. So there we go, there's the top, going into the bottom, getting those soft blends. And again, while I like it, while it did what we needed it to in that it was darker, that it had more contrast, I think that it could honestly look a little bit better brighter. So, how are we going to go about that? Very simply, we'll grab some extra purple, move that actually on top of the initial mixture because if it mixes with that, really isn't an issue. We'll be creating something very similar anyway. So here we have something quite a bit brighter and I want it to be just a little bit brighter, right? Not looking for a massive change. I think that's actually fairly close, but it could be a bit more purple, a bit more saturated. And it's also important to recognize whatever this new color is, it's not actually going to be that color fully on the canvas because acrylics are semi-transparent. We're going to see through it to a point, and that means we're going to see the darker application show through. Now I was going to go ahead and do a couple of layers anyway, so this really isn't an issue. Again, always a big advocate of a lot of layering. Definitely makes the piece look more professional in the end. There we go. Have the majority of the paint off my brush. So I'm going to take the rest off, make it a little bit damp, not too damp, but just a little bit, enough so we can blend. And then I'll work this out over the edges. And I'm going to extend it a bit farther than I previously did, because I don't want the edges to look slightly darker like they do right now. It almost looks like they have a, the hint of an outline, and that's something I really want to avoid. I don't ever really want outlines in my pieces. so. We're going to make the cloud a little bit bigger. That way we can ensure that the edge isn't that dark pigment we initially applied. There we go. Whenever I do art critiques, little things like that, I think one of the things I notice most, and it's because it happens to all of us, is I do find uh, little edges because you start with a darker base layer generally and then we make it brighter, but we're hesitant to work over the edges too, too much because, you know, we end up really liking them. But often, it'll really aid the painting if you do go back and you just make sure that those edges are not darker than the body or conflict with the lighting in the painting. Do some cohesive strokes through the drawing in the middle here. I think it looks quite nice. Let's mix up more of this pigment. Let's get you a little bit closer for this next step. Once we get back to our correct color, and we are going to very soon be there with just a hint of Mars Black. There we go. So here we find ourselves over on the left hand side, and again, I'm going to start by working this paint into the body get the majority of it off, and then I can get up towards the top here, around our edge, 
and do a little bit of a blend. You can see that I'm dragging the brush on the canvas more than I normally would. And I generally advise against this because it rips paint away from where you're initially applying it, makes it thin, and again, we like our thick layers. However, it's a great way of getting these very controlled blends, and we can always go back and add more paint. So that's really the thought process right now. We'll definitely need a couple of layers though because this area right here, and you can even see it, is brighter because you can see the white of the canvas showing through it. So that is something we'll avoid. Head back to our palette. Just checking the reference photo, looking for all the interesting little unique movements that we have going on in this. We have a very small piece which comes back out, protrudes, and it gets quite thin, semi-transparent as well. So you can see that I even skipped an area a little bit. There's, a, there's an opening and that's just going to make the cloud a bit more unique, stand out from the rest, moves us into the background a little bit. You can tell that this edge is a little bit hard. So we'll just go back in with a bit of a small amount of paint, but also a fairly damp brush. I'd also like to recommend that in the process here, you start off by making your clouds a little bit smaller than you think they're uh, going to be. And then you can expand and you just have more room to expand and change things, where if you make them as large as you think they should be initially, then every time you expand from there, you're making them bigger than, you know, you actually want them. So, start small and then build. It's a lot like how we mix paint. We start by mixing minimal amounts just to test the waters, see what it looks like on the reference photos, see what it looks like on the canvas, see what it looks like in relation to our other colors. And then once we like it, then we go back and we mix a whole lot more. But you can see that we have a couple of different protruding pieces. And I know that, I, I really want to stress that these are all different, right? There's a different amount of space between these than there is with these, and there's with these, and there's with these. You can see that's very tight, and then that's more of a medium distance, and that's a bit longer, and then, you know, it changes every time. The amount that these protrude from this larger body also changes, and that's important. So really look to establish diversity in your clouds, and that's going to make a really big difference and add up with all of your different subjects and pieces. It, <laughs> I really can't stress just what an impact it can have on your painting long term. So now it's time to add some depth to these clouds and we're going to do that by mixing a brighter purple which we have here and here. You can see that it actually moves its way up these ones, but it moves its way down these. So we'll mix this color, which is essentially this color, finish that and get started at that at the same time. So I'm going to begin as we apparently always do with quite a bit of our purple here. Move that to a nice spot on our palette. Now these are a bit more pink. We have more of that reflected light on them. So I'm going to grab some of our cadmium red medium hue and I'll start with a minimal amount maybe about one fifth that of our purple. We'll grab some titanium white, not too much, because I don't want to desaturate it greatly, at least not yet. Again, maybe going with about one fifth after this third time of me just kind of playing with it. And then we'll grab the smallest hint of Mars Black, taking off the excess, working that in there. And now let's give this a go. So already I can tell, far too purple, needs to be more pink. So we'll grab more of our red, work that in there. Grab some extra titanium white because adding that red will darken it. And you can tell that we do need to actually brighten it a little bit. There we go. We'll go in, give that a try. Again, it's all trial and error. That looks better. It's not correct yet. <laughs> it could be a little bit warmer, could have more red in it, but it's definitely in the right direction. So 
We'll add more red yet again. We'll go in for another test. And that right there looks incredibly close. Again, slightly more red, and we'll be happy. There we go. Okay, so, onto the canvas. So, we're now going to take that same Filbert brush, our brand new pigment, and I'm going to work it along the bottom of this cloud right here, covering up all of the little extended pieces as well that we have protruding. See that that fades off really nicely now. And then I'll slowly make my way upwards. We are at this point painting wet and dry as the initial purple has dried. And I have a little bit too much paint on my brush as you can probably tell. So I'm actually going to get rid of that right down here and start this area. We'll just get the majority of that paint off our brush do some blocking while we're at it. We're creating this opening in the clouds. That's why we created these little yellow areas previously. And that hasn't quite dried yet, which is good. We don't want it to. So we want to work relatively quickly as we get a lot of this pigment off. We could alternatively just take it off with the painting cloth, but it was quite a bit of paint. And I figured, you know what? We do have a use for it. Might as well work with it. So this is also something where we're going to need to create a gradient. The bottom is going to need to be darker, but for now we might as well build a base layer as we were going to have to do a lot of layering anyway. And we can also just move this in here. Covering up portions of the drawing, but that's okay. Can always go back and redo it can look at the start of the video, can use the traceable. If you're up over on Patreon, look at the reference photo, all of that good stuff. But now, while that is still wet, I'm going to take the remainder of my paint off my brush, make sure it's damp, grab the smallest amount, and then we'll go over, working very softly, moving upwards, it's dissipating, it's dissipating. And there we go, we have a little bit of depth. We can grab another small hint of it, work it along the bottom of this larger cloud. Again, making sure you actually get the bottom, that way it isn't outlined. Really like this. Still fairly subtle. And that's exactly what I wanted it to be. So now we're going to grab more of that pigment and we'll just start filling in the right hand side over here. Again, we'll leave a little bit of an opening for that yellow. And we do have quite a bit of paint mixed up, so. This won't be too tricky, won't take too long either. That said, I am going to move in to this area right between different portions of our boat. I'm going to leave this little opening there just so I know where that line should be when I redraw it. I'll try to keep that line over here. If we lose it, again, that's okay. We can always redraw it, but might as well make it easy if we can. And then I'll work my way upwards. Now that I have almost no paint left on my brush, I'm just going to smooth everything out Wash the brush lightly, make it a little bit damp, grab the smallest tint, and then we'll do a slight blend at the top here, making it soft. Give it a tiny little gradient. There we go. At this point, you should be fairly familiar with that technique, feel relatively confident with it. If not, that is okay. We do need to do quite a bit of layering and it will come in time. That said, that was only our first layer here. So we might as well grab more of that paint, head over to that left-hand side, which is now hypothetically dried, and fill that in as well. 
Again, just a second time. The pigment looks like it is incredibly similar, despite having to do with little remixes. So that's nice. Good sign that we're really internalizing how to mix those pigments. There we go. And this middle area also definitely needs more paint. I can still see the canvas through a fair portion of it. Now with that, I think it's time to mix a bit of a darker variant for right down below. So we're going to head back over to the reference photo and do some more mixing. So now it's time to add some depth to these larger clouds and we'll do so by looking at that color, making it a bit darker. So again, purple, black, titanium white, and red. This time we have more black than anything else and as you can tell, this is definitely going to be too dark. So let's add some additional purple to it and let's not add all of the red that we did because we're moving farther away from that actual light, that warmth which is going to create the more pinkish tone that we have on the top and the bottom there. So this time we're going darker, we're going more purple than we did. I think that's quite close. I'm just going to get a little bit of a distance. Yeah, that actually looks really nice. Uh, though I do want it to be slightly more saturated, so I'll add some extra purple and I want it to be slightly darker. So I'll add some extra Mars Black. The Mars Black will desaturate the purple a little bit. And the purple will brighten it a little bit. So we do need more Mars Black and we'll just kind of go back and forth until we find that perfect medium. I really like that. Okay, we'll give that a try and we'll head back over to the canvas. So jumping back into this bottom area should be quite fun and I do believe this is fully dried. So you know what? We'll start at the very bottom. I do like the contrast. I think there's quite a bit there. We'll work this about to the halfway point and I don't want to do all of it because at some point it's going to start drying and I don't want to kind of rush myself to finish a very large area at once. We do have this divider right here. So we don't have to worry about blending all of it simultaneously. It's a lot like looking for little kind of breaks in the sky like we do with the clouds. So I apply all of that. Now we need to make it blendable into our previous application. So I just made my brush a bit more damp, I'm working in these horizontal strokes, doing a bit of a blend upwards, being fairly soft with my brush. And you can see that there are some lines those are intentional. I do want little breaks in our clouds. I want little movements. I like that a lot. And I do want to do some wet into wet blends as well. So I'm just going to very quickly, as you can see, mix up the previous color that we used. And I have it on my palette. I always try to leave a little bit of every color, or at least every recent color on the palette. That way if you need to, you can remix to it very simply. There we go. Found it. And, oh no, no I did not. <laughs> That's uh, far too bright. Okay, more red, more Mars Black. Problem solving as the pigment dries. It's intense. It's kind of fun. It is fun. Okay, let's give that a go. Here we are. It's better. It's a lot better. Okay, very good. <laughs> Do a little bit of that there. Now we'll go back to the darker pigment because we have the wet pigment to blend into. It's going to make the cloud look a lot more dynamic. It's going to make our blends look softer. And when you're doing wet into dry, often the biggest issue you'll find is that your applications can look a little grainy. You can see the tooth of the canvas showing through. But when you go back and you remix the other color and you do wet into wet, then at that point, you essentially get rid of that grainy look. And some people really like that grainy look. I think that it's very situational for me. It's very painterly, it's a classic look. And I don't think there's anything wrong with it. It's very much just up to you and your personal preference. And therefore I wanted to show you, you know, that if you don't like it, you don't have to work with it, but if you do like it, 
then by all means, have fun. With that, we are going to move some of these over on the middle section. And this will all look significantly more clean when we start to work in the actual boat. Right now we have a lot of lines. We have these <laughs> open areas that, you know, have messy edges. Don't you worry about that. We will fill it all in and it will look great. But with that, I think that side is looking quite well. Let's work over here. Let's get you a little bit closer. So now heading over to the left hand side here, we are going to start with that darker pigment. We'll apply that to the bottom just like we did previously. We will overlap the boat slightly. We'll do a soft blend up because the brush is a little bit damp and you can see that we are getting a fairly smooth blend this time, which I like a lot. I don't want the darker area to move up quite as dramatically as it did over here because now we are in an area where the, all these openings are occurring. There's more light that's going to be moving through it. So I'm going to be a bit more careful and I probably won't go back in and do the wet into wet, but I'm just finding the middle portions and the bottom portions, the areas that are going to get the least amount of light that wraps around it or works through it. And I'm blending from there. So here we're just dissipating as we get up towards the edges here. We're dissipating, but you can see this gradient from darker to lighter, same, even in these small areas as well. You also don't have to work as quickly as I am. Again, take your time, enjoy the process. We're painting together. We're working on a very relaxing scene. It's okay to, you know, relax and do it and just enjoy the process. I also wanted to show you that we have these little clouds. Really like those. I think they add a lot of life. And I just go in with a fairly watery brush, little taps. Just like that. It's a nice little addition. Add some life to it. It also creates scale because we have these larger pieces, right? But as soon as you incorporate those, it shows how large these are. And without smaller pieces, you don't have context to the size of others. And therefore you don't really understand scale uh, visually uh, and not you specifically, but just that's how the mind works generally. So we just want to ensure that when we want something to look big, like this large wall of clouds in the distance, that we incorporate very small ones because that will articulate to us that general scale of the rest of it. So that's just a fun little thing we can do. Some of them will connect to the larger cloud, some won't. There we go. I start by having them not connect and then some of them I kind of move back and bring it all together. But I, I start by not connecting them because it gives me more option because I can either keep it open or I can connect where if I connect it immediately, it's really hard to make it open because then I have to remix all the colors that are kind of happening beforehand, right? So, so far so good. I'm going to move the camera back a little bit and I'm going to show you a quick little touch up we can also do. So as we look a little higher in the painting, we can see this cloud right here. Now this one's quite simple and it's important to have simple subjects. That way your complicated subjects can kind of retain more attention and these can more so just aid the general flow and composition of the canvas. But we have a lot of detail in this cloud right here and I want a subtle transition to less detail. So I want more in this. And rather than kind of extend the cloud like we did with these little protruding pieces, we can actually take portions out. And I think this is important just in case you make one cloud a little bit too big. So we're going to remix the color that we have in the sky. I believe that is right here on our palette. So we'll start with red because we can tell that it's quite red. We'll add titanium white. We'll add the smallest hint of a Mars black to it. You can already tell that we need to make it more red. It's a bit too desaturated, it's a bit too bright. Red is going to darken it and it's going to saturate it. It's closer, but it's not there. Add more red. And there we have it. It might have a little bit of yellow, but we'll do a little test. So I'm going to essentially find an area where I want there to be an opening. 
and then I'll blend out to the rest of the sky. Just like that, as you can tell, already making this cloud a bit more captivating. There's more happening with it. We can use it to soften some of the other areas using very minimal pressure right here. Just doing a slight blend up. Let's grab some water. Let's create another opening. That time I dragged in from the sky. So you can play with it. But just like this, you can see that the cloud's already a lot more interesting. And with additional layers, we can build it up. Because remember, acrylics are semi-transparent, which means this first application that we apply, especially because it's quite watery, is going to show the darker cloud through it. So if you really want it to be the same value as the sky, the same level of brightness, we'll need to go over it a couple of times. See that? Already a difference. I do think I need a bit of yellow on this, so I think I'll just touch that up, maybe spend another five minutes doing it, and then together we are going to hop into the next element of the painting. So there we have it from a bit of a distance. I do think it's important to note that while we are doing a lot of very small detail work here in the clouds, we do need to remember to take steps back. Often it, we can very easily get tied into a very specific area. We add all this detail, we make it look beautiful up close, but then when we move away, it doesn't really connect with the rest of the painting. So do ensure that every 10, 20 minutes, you are taking five or six steps back from your painting and giving it a good look. Because realistically, when you walk into a room, you're not going to be looking at a painting from half a foot away, you're going to be quite a distance. And we want to ensure that everything works cohesively together. So just try to take little mental notes of, okay, it's been this amount of time, maybe I get up, maybe I get uh, a drink, maybe I have a little bit of a snack. Those are, those are important things to remember as well. But do ensure that you are getting a little bit of distance. And with that, thus far, I really like it. And we're going to head into this bottom step next. Now we're going to switch to the half inch flat headed brush because those sharp edges and corners can render some really clean looking lines and edging. So from there, we're going to render the land right here in the distance and we'll do so by grabbing some of our Mars black. We'll grab about an equal mixture of titanium white and that'll render a fairly dark gray because again, the black is just a bit of a stronger pigment. From there, we'll grab about an equal mixture with our purple and this should render something fairly similar. We may need to darken it just a little bit, create a bit more contrast, but we'll go in for the test. And I think the added Mars black should, should do the trick. So try again, looks better. And you know what? Now I want it to be a bit more saturated. So we'll go in with the purple. And so I, would, I guess I would recommend when you're going to mix this, just use about maybe two-fifths titanium white to your Mars black and then add some of that extra purple. There we go. I think we are certainly moving in the right direction. And again, friendly reminder just not to go with the first pigment you mix, but continue until you get what you actually want. So we're going to head in here and as per usual, I'm going to start on the lines that I want to be a bit sharper. And that means beginning right here on the top, but I'm not really going in with the entirety of the side of our brush. I'm more so going in with the corners and I'm doing a slight tapping so that we get a variety of markings that look like protruding trees and clusters of trees in that distance. Now I'm also not going for a straight line. There are movements up and down and now, when I get towards the actual boat, I'll go in with that straight, really sharp application using the entirety of the side of our brush. 
we'll craft that. And now I'll use the remainder of the paint on the brush, which is actually still quite a lot. And we'll just work our way back to the left. There we go. And I think I still actually have enough to create a sharp edge down here. Remember, sharp edges, difficult if you don't have enough paint. So make sure that you do, make sure that your brush is still damp. There we go. And I'm not making this bottom area through a singular stroke, I'm doing it through multiple just because it's easier to control. Generally when we go for a singular stroke you have a real curve one way or another. You can also use a ruler or painter's tape if you find it difficult. And much like everything else, we should probably go ahead and let this dry, then go back in with a second, maybe a third layer. With that, we're going to move over to the right-hand side, in between the different portions of our boat. Again, we start at the top, go in with that nice little tapping effect, and now we work right in between those sharper details. Now I apply a little bit of extra pressure. There we go. And now over onto the right, and we'll get you a little bit closer for that. Back to our palette. Back to the top of our tree line. And you can still see minor lines that I have of four portions of the boat. Don't worry about going over those. You will have enough to kind of remember where everything goes. And again, if you don't, you can always go back to the start of the lesson, look at the initial drawing, or use the traceable, use the reference photo, all of that good stuff. But here we're just working our way over to that edge. And I actually went over part of the boat that I didn't want to, but again, that is A-OK. -okay. Work that down. Concentrating here, so I'm not able to talk as much. But there is another portion right down here. And then it goes back this way, and you know what? I think what I see here in the boat is actually just protruding almost like guardrails, a little safety features. So we'll go over that and we'll just paint them back in a little bit later. That said, as you can see, I'm running out of water on my brush, so it's getting very choppy. I, I don't have a lot of control and I would have had to press really hard into the canvas with the remainder of my paint, probably rendered a larger application than I wanted. And so in scenarios like this, do it just, you know, grab some extra water, grab some extra paint, and then head back in. It really isn't worth it trying to kind of force that situation. Now I'll cut in the bottom here. And if you go down farther than you initially intend to, that is okay. We are going to hypothetically work over this area a little bit with what we have down here. So extending it farther by a minor amount is actually, could be a little beneficial. So don't worry about that. And now we'll go back in. Just going to make sure my edges are nice and full. This first application, as I noted, won't really be enough to make it as opaque as we want it to be. So we will just let this dry in a minute. I'll head back in, do a second layer. I'd recommend you do the same. And then together, we will start working on the water. Now we're going to take our one inch flat headed brush and start creating this darker color that we have for the waves and all of the movement. Now I do have some ultramarine blue back on our palette and we're actually going to start with that. So I'll move that right over here. This is dried at this point so no worries there. We'll grab about an equal mixture of Mars black, a little bit of titanium white, maybe about a third of what we were using elsewhere. And I can tell that it's very very desaturated. So you know what we'll do? We'll add a little bit of our purple, then we'll add about double that in our blue. We really want this mixture to be cohesive with everything else in the painting, but we also want it to have its own 
unique pigment in there. That again being the ultramarine blue. We want this to be very dark. Arguably the darkest pigment that we've incorporated yet. We'll do a little test. And that is <laughs> darker than what we need, but far darker than what we have up there. So, we're very close. We'll just make it a little bit brighter. Though we won't do that with titanium white, we'll do that with blue and purple as to leave in the saturation. And then once we have something quite nice, do another test. Much better, still darker than that. It is. Okay, so with that, let's head back to the canvas, fill up the bottom portion. So now we're going to take that new pigment and we'll start applying it down here at the bottom. In the reference photo, as you saw, it was only really where the waves had a dipping point. So you could tell that they were raised and then there was the side of them, which was opposite to that of the light over here. And so it was much darker. However, we're going to paint the entirety of this bottom area with that pigment and then we'll layer the lighter water on top. The layering process that we're doing here is just going to make it look a whole lot more clean in the end, where alternatively, we could have simply painted in the lighter pink for the water and then did small little dashes for the shadows. And that would be acceptable, but it wouldn't look as good as what we're going to achieve here. So instead, we'll just start mixing this out, blending it up. Generally when I'm working in a very large area like this, I do like to move predominantly in horizontal strokes. However, I also like an X-shaped pattern to move paint upwards. And I'm not going to do it to the point where we're ripping away paint from anywhere else. But we can move all of the excess. I can tell that there's quite a bit over here. So we'll just work that along the bottom of the boat. Craft our edges over here. So far, so good. And while this is all still wet, I'm going to remix to this pigment right here, and then we'll do a bit of a blend. So, quite a bit of purple, Mars black, titanium white. There we go. Do a little test. Need to make it darker. Working relatively quickly so that this doesn't dry. And there we go. So, now yet again, I'll work that on the base here. Might move it up slightly. Work around our boat. And then once I have those edges in, we go for that blend. So you can see that it gets darker as it moves farther down because there's less reflection. Generally, the foreground has the sharpest contrast, the most natural, innate coloring. And that's what we're trying to achieve here. So the background has a bit more of that beautiful, reflective purple. And this just gets slightly darker. Also, I can tell that the, uh, the sun seems to have gone down. So I'll make the camera a bit brighter and then we'll proceed. Okay, so we're back. We have a bit more light. We're going to continue this right through here. And then on the other side as well. Once we have that sharp line implemented, we'll create the sharp lines around the boat. And then we'll just fill in as we did previously until we get to the point where we can do a blend. And this is starting to dry a little bit, so you can always go back and grab more of that wet pigment to get into wet into wet blend. It also doesn't need to be extremely clean like a blend in the sky would be because the majority of this, really 90%, maybe more, will be covered with a brighter pink. So this is essentially just a <laughs> admittedly messy, or can be messy, base layer, but it's not something you have to put a lot of time into. Just make sure it's nice and thick and you have a little bit of a transition from a bit of a brighter purple 
down to a darker purple with some blue in it. But with that, on to the next step. So now we're going to work on all of those beautiful highlights on top of the water and we'll be doing so with the half inch flat headed brush. Now I'm going to begin here by grabbing some of our red. We'll move that down on the palette. This is all dry so I'm not too worried about that. We'll make it into more of a pink by adding an equal mixture of titanium white. Then we don't want it to be a, a pure pink, right? This kind of works for this area right here, maybe this area, but those are highlights I want to add on later in additional layers. Right now I want something that's a bit more of that pinkish purple. So we will grab that pinkish purple, work that in, make a really beautifully blended highlight. And this one's a bit more desaturated right now, but we can use our blue and our red to make it a bit more saturated. I will, however, make it darker as they were both darker values than what we had here in the previous mix. So we'll just mix that up, go in for a little test, and I like that a lot. Again, slightly more purple, and that right there is what I want. So now we'll head back into the canvas with our brand new mixture and I want to show you the larger idea here. So we're going to fill the majority of it with this color. However, we're going to leave darker openings and I'll create the first one right here. Just like that. So it's essentially an elongated triangle and we put a little bottom right down there. Very simple, very easy. We want them to all be different. We want some to be longer, some to be taller. Cut that one short. And then once you have a number of them in a similar area, you can fill in the middle just like I'm doing here. Leaving little openings, creating all of this implied movement and the backs of these waves. They're not large waves, they're fairly subtle, but I think they look quite nice. This is something we are going to do predominantly in the foreground though, because in the background, these will simply be too small to see properly. But I'll show you what we do when we get to the middle ground and background. Technique changes a little bit, but of course we still have waves, so we need to follow those general ideas that water generally presents. Here you can see I'm just cleaning some things up, continuing, with that general pattern. Continuously going back and grabbing more water and more paint though, because I really want these applications to be nice and clean. I don't want that toothy texture of the canvas showing through. And I'm also going over areas a number of times so that I can build it up, get something nice and thick. I think that this area is still, for the most part, the foreground, so we can continue. And you can see that I'm also jumping around quite a lot. That is purposeful. I don't really want to accidentally start integrating the same techniques, movements, patterns in the same spot, because then it would be a little visually repetitive and it wouldn't be as interesting, right? So. To ensure that I'm not doing that, or at least not noticeably doing that, I move around quite a bit. It also gives you time to kind of reflect on what you've done, what's working and what isn't. If you want more or less detail in a certain area, just taking those little breaks can be quite useful.
Definitely need to thicken some of these applications. Trying to get this bottom area done first as well. Simply because I want to ensure that the edges look nice and clean. Especially up close. Generally up close you have more detail. The, the eye can actually recognize more detail. And things will look a little bit sharper. So if your brush strokes, your applications are a little bit more loose. The paint isn't as well applied in the background, it isn't as noticeable, but in the foreground it's imperative that we really spend this time and we get it right. I know this is probably turning into a bit of a longer section here, but one of those things you do want to take your time on. Okay, so now, so we get a little bit farther back, Rather than making that triangular shape, we're going to move more into horizontal strips with slight movements up and down and occasionally it'll have a curve which connects it into either a higher or lower one of it. That is beautiful color right there. There we go, working horizontally. Something I'm also noticing that I'm doing, and you can see it right here and right here, is as I go for that stroke, after a certain point, I kind of move up with my brush. That's not intentional. It's really just one of those things where the, the mechanics of your arm, the, the way you're standing, all these different little things can kind of impact it. I see it all the time in Horizons whenever I'm critiquing work and just try to ensure that you're ending out that stroke well and if you find that you are continuously kind of having a movement that flares up or down something you can do is just continue but make the strokes less long that way you have more control throughout the entirety of the movement Okay, so far so good. Starting to look a little bit more natural now that we have this movement, especially up on the left hand side. We'll hop over to the right for a little while. Horizontal stroke, horizontal stroke, one kind of in the middle that connects some. This little area is still, still the foreground, so I'll just Clean that up a little bit. And then we'll move back into that middle ground. There we go. So far, so good. Beginning to get some real depth in here. You can see that sometimes I skip larger areas, sometimes I skip smaller areas. There I had it flip up over on that side. So I'll just work to correct that. And you can correct it by just A, by moving the paint, but B, sometimes it's easier to just block it in and make it a larger, more opaque area with less openings. You can have those throughout here. It will look natural as long as it's well balanced with everything else. As I move farther back, I do incorporate slightly more water on my brush as well. And I'm doing that so that my applications are more thin, which allows me to get a very sharp application, which is great, but it also ensures that, one second, but it also ensures that the applications aren't as stark. So the, the paint's thinned, so you can see the darker pigment through it more and therefore it's more semi-transparent and that means the foreground can pop more in relation to the middle ground and background. There we go.
real movement there. Unintentional, but fixable. You can also start to tap in applications once you get to this middle ground. So here you can see I'm just going back, just adding a slight little highlight and texture over different areas. And I'm doing that because we're at this point where we can't really see that much detail, but a second little tap of the brush is going to bring up the value of that area. It's going to make it brighter because we're going to have more of this color rather than a combination of this and that color, right? So it's an easy way of adding a very simple detail which isn't overly complicated. And it's at this point, you know, middle area of the boat that I'd start incorporating that. You can see that my brush strokes are getting very short, still very transparent, connecting spots here or there. Let's head over to this side. And I'm trying, <laughs> attempting, to not put my hand in the way. Apologies if it's not always perfect. Here you kind of have to angle yourself around the canvas to ensure that you don't end up with those wispy movements. And that does unfortunately mean that occasionally I might be a little bit in front of the camera. But you are seeing a lot of this process, so hopefully the occasional unfortunate movement doesn't hinder the learning process too much. Okay, and so now I'm just moving up all the way to the back there. I have almost no pigment on my brush. And I'm pressing a little bit harder. It's expanding my bristles. I'm getting less openings. There we go. It's really nice. And I'm doing that because we're at the point in the distance where you really just won't see much detail. Though, admittedly, that does need some touch-ups. <laughs> let's, uh, let's go in. Let's recraft the, the top there. And then let's tap in some extra highlights. Not too many. It's all about layering. Also, if you make the area a little bit too flat looking, you can always go back to the darker mixture that you had previously. Maybe a little bit darker. And you can work that in as well, and you can go back and forth until you get the balance that you really want. With that, I'm just going to fix up this side, and then we'll head on over to the left. Now, before we get back down to this water here, I did want to note that I've started this little texture process in the background here. It's not in the reference photo, it's not something I intended to do, but as I was doing just another layer here, I realized that there's a little choppy and that we could do something with it. So if you find that your trees are looking a little choppy, even with that half inch flat headed brush, you can just take different mixtures of the purples that you used for this, be it a little bit darker or a little bit brighter, rotate your brush, and you can just create this really neat little texture in the background. It's not too much, it's not distracting. It's just a little bit to kind of help the area be unique. And I thought that was fun. So it's not something you need, and it's very easy to accomplish. You just take a slightly brighter color than what you were working with. And you just go in with this tapping motion, again rotating to keep it different, but also using the corners sometimes just for some very specific detailing. That said, I started to just do another layer there because I realized that the horizon line wasn't as straight as I wanted it to be. So I'm just mixing up some of this darker pigment to go 
right down here. I think it could be a little bit darker. Just trying to look on this side, figure out how far it needs to go. And we can even bring it down farther than initially intended because we can cover it up with the water after. So you don't have to worry too much about it. There we go. I think that looks good. Going to clean my brush. Now we'll go back to our red. Small amount of Mars black. A lot of purple. Titanium white. Definitely needs to be more red. More pink rather. And a little bit of that. And we're back to our proper color. So, now we'll go back up here. I'll add some slight highlights to our previous applications to get some of our pigment off the brush. Because I don't want too, too much, especially when I'm getting this high. Remember, we want it to be a bit more dissipated, a bit more subtle. So I'm just going to go back. And I might even start combining some areas so that things are a bit more visually simplified. Definitely something I want to do. And now is a decent time to do it. So now that I have a lot of paint off my brush, and it's more so just watery, with a hint of hue, we can go back, create those lines just like we did before. Over on the right hand side, lots of little taps. Mostly horizontal. Work that all the way across. And we don't want that much detail, so I do this with a bit more pressure, fill it in. And then as I get towards the middle of the boat, I start to relieve that pressure a little bit. That way we get that detail in the mid-ground. There we are. And we'll just go back and do a couple more applications, build it up a little bit. But I'm very, very happy with this. Now we'll take a couple of steps back, grab more of that pigment, and again simplify as I talked about in the previous step. Just because we have a lot of openings, and a number of them are quite large. And we don't want it to be over complicated. We don't want it to take away from the actual boat. So we're just going to take more of this pigment and slowly make our openings a bit smaller while taking out others entirely. See that I'm really trying to jump around as we do. Don't want to accidentally add too much of the highlight to one side or the other. And I say it's a highlight because while it isn't actually a different color, it does make these areas look brighter. Because again, the more layers we add, the less transparent the layers are. So the less of that darker base layer we can see through. I think this is really really helping it right now. There we go. Water starting to look nice and full. Uh, just a couple lines up here to continue that general highlight. Really like that transition that we have going on. Can do that up here too. Again, it's the little touch-ups that really bring it together. I 
thicken that, thicken that, definitely thicken this area. There we go. Okay, now we're going to head to the next step. So now we're going to remix this color. However, we are going to make it a little bit warmer, a little bit brighter, and we're also going to make it a little bit more orange as well because we want this to stand out. We want it to be a nice reflection of the sky, right? And the sky isn't just all pinks and purples. There are also some nice yellow sections. Now we do have to be careful with the purple because purple does have blue in it and blue and yellow as we know make green so I'm trying to ensure that what I mix here is essentially a little bit more red dominant than it is yellow dominant and I think that is a really beautiful color that complements that so we'll use this as the highlight and head back in so now we'll make sure that our brush is nice and damp. We'll grab some of that newly mixed pigment and we'll head to the highlighted areas. So we want to avoid the darker spots, but predominantly the highlighted areas that we feel are the most raised. And those are going to be right below the darker areas. So here we have a spot right below that one. We have a spot right below that one. You can also do it right above, but we just want to ensure that all of the protruding pieces get those highlights and then the larger bodies of water like this also get those highlights. And we're going to do this predominantly in the foreground and a little bit in the middle ground. But we don't want to overdo it, we don't want to do all of it. This is just to add a little bit of depth. So here we're going underneath and we're filling out this larger area. We're making our brush nice and damp and then we'll also catch the top of this wave with some highlight as well. Now here we have a bit more of a larger opening. Fill that in. As you move into the background you kind of let that paint dissipate on your brush that way the farther back you get, the more transparent your applications are, the more subtle. You can also do a little bit of finger painting if you apply too much. There we go, just connecting a couple spots. I think it's really coming together now. Definitely needed this extra layer. And it's amazing what an extra layer can do. Especially when you mix the right color when it works cohesively with whatever else you're working on. Really love it. So, we'll just continue over to the right hand side. And you can go back over your pre-existing applications too and just build up this nice pinkish orange. Some areas will be a bit more thin and therefore darker, less opaque. Then you'll have a variance between the original layer, your new highlighted layer, and a different variant of your new highlighted layer. So now you have essentially three different hues, three different values to add diversity to the mixture. Here we're moving up, we're being more cautious. Use my finger to blend. Though do be careful if you use your finger because, again, if you have any oil on your hand and you go over an area, you can move that oil onto the canvas and then that area won't accept water and therefore paint in the same way. So just make sure that if you are going to do a little bit of blending with your hand, that your hands are very clean and that you've just recently washed them. With that, just connecting more. Really love this addition. But with that, I'll just finish it up. And then, together, we will start on the boat. The main subject, something I think we're all pretty excited to get to.
That said, don't feel like you need to rush this section. It can be very cathartic, and really enjoyable. So have fun with it. So now we're going to start working on the boat and we're going to begin as we generally do with darker base layers and then we'll build on top of it. You can see that there's a not light, but lighter blue up here, especially right through there. And then it dissipates towards the bottom, but there are different elements that pop out. Those are all things we're going to address. But again, we are going to begin with the darker base layer. That means quite a bit of our Mars black means about half that in our ultramarine blue, because while the highlights are more blue, we also want the shadows to be a bit more blue, nice and cool. It'll be a great contrast with all the orange that we have going on up there. They are complementary colors. And then I'll grab just the smallest hint of titanium white. Normally you see us grab the Mars black and then wipe it off on the side. This time we're going in and doing that with the titanium white because we really don't want much. And this is meant to be a darker subject for sure. So let's do a little test in the darkest areas of it. I think that looks great. Let's head on into the canvas and cover this boat. So now we're going to take some of that pigment on a nice new damp brush. This one again is the half inch flat headed brush. I'm going to brace my hand to remove any shake. And we'll start working right on here, making a couple of strokes as to gain a little bit of extra control. And speaking of control, I'm actually going to dub over this little section here because while I was attempting to talk and paint at the same time, it was just it was difficult and I, I didn't want the instruction to suffer. I didn't want the painting to suffer either. So I thought we'd go with the classic. We talk about it here kind of post the process and I, I know my hands a little bit in the way. Don't worry. I do fix that though. It is uh, <laughs> it's one of those subjects where you have to approach it from the correct angle to get the correct movements. And so therefore when we're filming with a camera occasionally it, it will get a little iffy, but no, you will get the instruction and you will see a lot of the painting. So again, don't you worry. That said, I am beginning by painting the edges of our subject because again, when you have more paint on your brush, when you have more water in your brush, that is the ideal time to tackle that area as that'll help you render the sharpest application. Then as we begin to run out of paint, we move into the middle section, we fill it in and we're doing that because we can apply more pressure with the brush there where when we're working on the edges, we want to apply as little pressure as possible so that the bristles don't expand. And that way we do again, get the tiniest, but also most intentional application possible. And here you can see I've started to run out of that paint. So I'm moving in a little bit and the paint is fairly semi-transparent because I do have quite a bit of water on my brush because I do want those sharp intentional applications. This does mean we'll have to go in and do two, maybe three layers of the base, but I really do think that's the best way of going about it. We could have loaded up a lot of paint on the brush, went in and just tried to fill it in a single layer. However, all of that extra paint on the brush is going to move to the edges at a point, which is going to make it a bit more messy. It's going to just make the process less refined. And we've already spent all of this time on the background, on the clouds, on the water. We don't want to mess it up. Though, if we do, again, don't worry, it's acrylics and it's a very friendly medium. It's a very forgiving medium, but at this point, I'm trying to avoid it and I would recommend multiple layers that are a little bit more thin. I think that that patience really does pay off. But with that, here we are heading back to the palette, remixing that color right on top of our previous mix. And I get a lot of questions as to how I keep the paint on my palette wet for long periods of time. And the honest answer is I don't. I use as much as I can, a little bit of it dries, and then I go back and I mix more. However, I think that's a good process because it does ensure that you're consistently 
learning how to mix the colors that you want to and it just will make you a stronger painter over time i guarantee it but here we are heading more so into the middle of the boat and the boat is an interesting thing it's comprised of a myriad of simple shapes and that's generally how i recommend you look at any piece of you know human made uh, equipment structures etc break it down into the most simple shapes kind of figure out how they're moving changing it'll make a very complicated subject much more approachable and this one i see a triangle i, I see a, essentially a rectangle in the middle that's attached to the triangle so i just start painting those the triangle is overlapping you can see that the wind is moving it just a little bit back and the dimension will really be solidified later when we add in our uh, mid values our highlights etc as those will show the light wrapping around the subject but right now we are just focusing on creating that silhouette and it's a really nice process <laughs> it's quite cathartic we've done a lot of mixing blending tapping a lot of different techniques in this but here it's really quite simple we are essentially coloring in our area with our mars black pigment and that's fantastic i'd also like to note that in this particular area down here there aren't really any notable basic shapes like what we just worked on up top and in this scenario it can be useful to kind of just look for all of the individual little edges their trajectory if they have a bend if they're straight all of those little things can help you kind of amalgamate the complicated movements and turn it into something that is digestible and then professional as well. So whenever you're kind of facing these more complicated things, do try to initially look for basic shapes. And if it's just too complicated, then look for all of the little edgings and outlines and what they're very specifically doing, because then you'll end up with the correct amount of detail, good proportions, all of that, where if you kind of freehand it, use your imagination, sometimes we tend to oversimplify. So just make sure that you are looking for all of those interesting little pieces. With that said, we are fairly far into the painting lesson, and I'd like to say a big thank you to all of you for making it this far, for being a part of the community, and for, again, just... Uh, keeping traditional art alive. I always I always appreciate that and I always think that's really special. I love digital art. I have fun with it, but I think it's great that we're still working with acrylics here in 2021 and thank you for being a part of that. I also want to say a big thank you to everybody who is up over on Patreon directly supporting the channel. Say it every week, but it's something that I want to say every week multiple times. I say it once, that way it doesn't get too repetitive. But thank you for making this happen. These lessons would not happen if it wasn't for you and your direct support. It, I just, I, I wouldn't have the time. I, I wouldn't be able to do it if I had to go and do something else. And it's a real honor that you provide me with the opportunity to make these lessons for a living. So thank you to all of you for making this lesson happen. Thank you for just, you know, providing and giving back to the channel. Also, if you are new to the channel, maybe this is your first time watching, this is your very first video, you can support the channel up over on Patreon. Up there you can get the traceables to help you with the drawing process. You can get the reference photos to print out and color match on. You can get access to the polls, all of my exclusive eBooks like that of acrylics for beginners. In there we talk about what brushes to use, how to blend our paint, how to create glazes about composition, really everything you need to know about acrylic painting before you jump into your first acrylic painting. I also have a bunch of eBooks full of traceables. We have landscapes, we have flowers, Hours. On top of that, there's also an exclusive Facebook group where we can all post our artwork, chat, do all of that. So there's a lot of fun stuff up there. If you're interested, there will be a link in the video description. And again, to everybody who is up there already, big thank you. I do hope that the traceable and the reference photo helped you with this one. I know that I personally found them very useful, especially with that drawing process. So yeah, I, I hope it's going along very well. And with that, on to the next step. Yeah. 
Now, for the first time this lesson, we are going to be switching to our small liner brush. And as you can see, it does not have many bristles and that is perfect because it means it can't make a large marking. We want this for the finer details and you're going to see me render a very long straight line using that brush and as you can see, a clear ruler. Now, the brush is going to be quite damp. I'm going to be taking that same black pigment or almost black pigment that we were previously using for the silhouette and I'm going to start crafting this line. However, you can see that as per usual, I'm not going all the way. I'm not trying to render this incredibly long line from the start. I go in from the top, I then go back down to the bottom, I move upwards, and then I connect in the middle. I'm also doing it with multiple layers, and this is all occurring because the brush simply can't pick up that much paint, and if we were going to attempt to move all the way down with a singular application, we would run out, probably press harder with our brush to get more paint off, expand the very limited number of bristles and end up with a line which gets larger in a portion. So much like everywhere else, I'd recommend not going in and doing a singular line for those larger areas, but a myriad of them. And here you can see that I'm just using that ruler as a straight edge. The fact that it's clear is great because it allows me to see the rest of my subjects. And here you can see that now I'm trying to maneuver between our previous applications and not really touch them because I don't want to move the paint. I don't want to kind of hinder the application with the actual ruler. So that is something to be careful of. And if you find that it's a little too tricky, you can just wait four or five minutes, let that last layer dry and then move on to the next one. Chances are it's probably going to dry quite quickly because it is acrylic, but also we really can't apply much paint. So the applications themselves will be fairly thin, which again, just means that they will dry pretty quickly. Now here I'm just essentially working off of the reference photo and where all of these are. I tried to keep a little note of them in past applications, just little open areas, little unfinished spots right where I knew these would end up going. So that's what I'm currently working with. And I do want to <laughs> kind of stress again, try to do this with as little pressure as possible. That's really going to be what makes these tiny, what makes these very successful. It can be okay if you press a little harder, it means you'll end up with a larger stroke, but I, I think that the smaller you can get it while still having it visible from a couple feet away is definitely going to be ideal. Here we are just again continuing to move around with this ruler and I can tell that the edge has a little bit of paint on it so I'm starting to be a bit more careful. You can kind of hold it in the air, you can kind of flip it to the other side but just do be careful because you don't want a random uh, almost black spot just kind of up in that very relatively simple sky, right? here. However, I am really making all of these micro adjustments just to make sure that we get this where we want. We go back in, we land that application. The bottom doesn't look fully applied. You can go back and fix that in a little bit. But so far, I'm really happy with this and I definitely got significantly better results here than I would have had I not gone in and used the ruler. So big recommendation there. And now I'm just adding some little details to the back of the boat and, you know, just kind of having fun with it, making it my own, adding those artistic liberties. I do implore you to as well and just make sure that you're having fun with it. I decided to take it the people, but we're adding in some other things. So now we'll switch back to the half inch flat headed brush and start working on the various blues that you'll see throughout here. Here, predominantly, I think we have the darkest and then we have a slightly brighter one along the highlights. You can see it up through here. And then we have a very bright one where the light is really working its way through. So we'll save that for the end. We'll work on that second. And of course, we'll start right there. So grab quite a bit of Mars Black. Probably, we'll start with an even mixture of our blue. And then we'll go in with about half that titanium white. This will make a very desaturated blue as we have a lot more 
white and black in this combined than we do blue. But when we go to test, as you can see, it actually looks really, really close. I think we'll just add a little bit more titanium white. And that's what we will use. So on over to the canvas. So now we'll take that same damp brush and we'll head in to the boat. Now we'll actually be doing quite a lot of it, covering quite a bit of our base layer here. Not all of it, but quite a lot. And then we'll be going over areas yet again with a lighter variant. But I'm going to begin here about two thirds of the way up of the boat. And then I create a bit of a sharp line. Then I start to blend down very softly, letting it dissipate. And then we'll also leave a darker lip at the bottom of the boat. And this way we have some light wrapping around. It's dissipating as it gets towards the back here. And it's just a very subtle, nice feature. So now we'll head back, grab a bit more. There's another area right up here that wraps around the boat. It's going to be sharp on this edge, and then it's going to expand upwards, drop back down, and then we have a flat area with the darker area of the boat in between. Now that this has had some time to dry, I'll go back in and add a bit of a second layer. Just thicken it up, grab a bit more. We'll also add this to all of the areas of the boat which are facing the light. So that's the top of this area, this flat portion, and then the one that moves right down here as well. And I'll just do a very slight blend down, again creating a gradient, but it is noticeably separated from this and this. So we have three different little sections going on there. Then, as you move up towards the mast, we have one part that moves on top of the other. So I'll just craft a line for that right now. I think that looks right, just checking my reference photo. Yeah, okay, I like that. So now, we'll start to blend towards the edge. Right here, try to get that nice sharp line. Just like that, lights wrapping around it, very minimally of course. And I, I'm, I'm sure on camera this all looks very, very dark. I'll brighten it up just a little bit. We don't have to, and generally the more build up you can do, the more depth it'll have in the end. But I don't think this will really detract from the painting and I think it'll make it easier for you to see. So we'll just go into something a little bit brighter we're kind of skipping a step, going to our mid value. But I'm going over the tops, the areas that should be the brightest. Just like that. Then we'll go back into the mast. Over the sail. There we go. Clean that up, give it a nice sharp edge. There we are, that's pretty. Then we can fill it in again. We don't want to make all of it this brighter variant of blue because we want that nice contrast for the foreground still. We want this to pop amongst everything else. And if we were to continue to make all of the values brighter and brighter to add color, we'd essentially have something that no longer pops from the background, and that's not what we want. So, for now, that's about as bright as we're going to get in those areas, and we can slowly work it up should we need to. That said, we're now going to be working on this one over here. I'm going to avoid the pole in the middle initially, so we'll just do a line right beside it. There we go. A 
blend all the way around till we get to this edge. And I'm actually not going to highlight this edge. It's kind of folding over back towards us, so there's a lot of added material in there. It's difficult for the light to pass through it. At least more difficult than a single layer. So we'll just keep that a little bit darker along the edges. Not so it looks like it has an outline. We, we still want it to be a bit of a gradient into that, but just so it looks generally correct and has some form, has some depth. I'm also going to head up here to the other side of the cylindrical piece and we'll add some highlight to the area that is again wrapping around. And I'll actually extend that down a little bit more so you can see it moves that way, down, like that. I like it a lot. Worked out really well. Okay. Now, we are going to brighten it up a little bit, but very select portions and areas. So, we'll give this a go. And you know what? I'll get you a little bit closer and also move you up. So, right here, we'll have a lot of light kind of moving through. So, I'm grabbing that slightly brighter variant. I'll begin and right beside that more cylindrical piece. I'll work my way down. I'll go to the other side of it. Add that same highlight. We'll have it dissipate as it goes up, dissipate as it goes down. And we also want it to do a bit of a blend. We want a bit of a gradient. So you can even grab some of that darker pigment from before and work that into it. Grab more of that, we'll head over here. And I'm not going to do a lot at any one point. It's all essentially going to be gradually built up. We're going to look how it's, look at how it's kind of working with the rest of the piece as we go, ensure that we're never kind of accidentally making it just blend in too much. Again, we need that contrast. But, it's a really great step for slowly building that depth, making it look a lot more natural rather than just a silhouette. Though, there is something to be said for how attractive the silhouette can be. And if that's what you'd like to do with your piece, then by all means, enjoy it, make it that way, have fun with it. I try to say this in every lesson, but these are here to help teach you, to guide you, to inform you, to help you, but <laughs> not to make it so you do everything exactly like I do all the time. Please feel free to take artistic liberties, make it your own, have fun with it. It is your artistic journey as much as it is mine, and I want you to enjoy it. If that means changing things, then... Enjoy changing them. Love seeing the different renditions. How people edit pieces, make them their own. Always a pleasure. So, again, please feel welcome to. That said, here you can see I'm slowly brightening, extending, just continuing that same process. one little stroke at a time. There we go. Starting to build up, starting to get some depth. We're definitely moving in that right direction. If you go over too much of the center, don't worry, you can just paint that back in. Again, I do want my edges to be slightly darker. Let's go in with an even brighter variant. Slowly, slowly building it up. I'm also trying to make it more saturated, so we're working in more blue yet again.
There we go, making sure that edge is nice and sharp. And this is getting quite bright. However, there's a big however, this edge is still very dark. So we still have that very definitive form. We just have more contrast. And I think it's working quite nicely. There we go. Again, taking our time, but getting there. With that, I think I'm going to change the shot and show you us working on a bit of a different spot. Now, as we come back down to the bottom here, we continue with that same half inch flat headed brush. We go for a bit of a slightly darker blue because we haven't had a chance to build it up like we have up in the higher portions of the boat. But now, yet again, we're going to kind of locate the areas that are going to be receiving the most amount of light. And we'll work that edge to begin with course we do our slight gradient. We're just building it all up same way that we had before with the darker pigments but now things just really pop nicely right? Really stand out in a good way. I added this little design up here. Wasn't in the photo but I thought it could be neat and I like how that turned out as well. We'll also work this edge. Do a little bit of a blend inwards. There we go. Make sure it's nice and sharp though. If we do use our finger, we go back and we fix it up. Now we'll brighten slightly. And because we're brightening it, we will also resaturate it a little bit. Add back in some blue. There we go. That is a beautiful touch up. Just doing very slight taps right now. Being very purposeful with all of my markings. You can also take this because it's definitely the brightest pigment, work it up a little bit higher as well. That's what so much of this is. It's testing, building, trying it in other areas. Okay, it works there, so it should probably work up here as well. And you know, because that's brighter, now we need to make something else brighter. It's all part of the process. That's why generally, for a lot of people, the painting looks a little awkward for the first 80, maybe 90% of the process. And then in that final 10%, it all comes together. Each element is fixed, it's cohesive, it's what we want it to be. And it's just so rewarding, truly. So. Now I'm going back to a bit of a darker blue because I realized I want slightly more of a gradient down here. It's a good start. We'll go a bit darker again. There we go. Getting there. You can really see that light wrapping around now. It's making it a lot more three-dimensional. And I just slowly add more Mars Black as we move over to this side. And then I'll go back for the blend. Make my brush relatively damp. We can get a nice smooth application here. And there we go. That's nice. I also want to go back to the smaller pointed brush. Work on some little safety features, of course. Just like that. 
incredibly easy. You could use a ruler, but it's small enough that I feel quite confident in not having to use a ruler. We'll just bring that all the way around to this front section. Now we'll get a bit of a highlight for it, for the top. It's metallic, it'll catch light. I'm mixing with the liner brush, which is not ideal because you want a very minimal amount of pigment on this brush, and it also doesn't have a lot of bristles to actually mix with. So just be aware that <laughs> it might be a little tricky, but you can also just switch to the other brush for mixing and then back to this for the actual application process. So here I'm just going on top of that rail and now I'll add a highlight to the left hand side of all of the vertical pieces. Notice I was moving a little too quickly, so now I'm slowing down. Just building up those details. Can also use this to add highlights to the rest of the boat with very definitive markings. This is where I'm just going to take some artistic liberties and add in a couple little pieces, a couple designs that I think could add nicely to it. Add some highlights to the back here. Have those highlights get lost in the very dark area. There we are. You can also use some of this on the bottom of here. Again, now that we have that proper highlight, we know how bright we're getting, we can kind of go back and work on so many different little pieces. You can also go back in and add darker areas if we feel it necessary. Really, really love how this is turning out though. There's also a little piece little piece up here that I forgot. It's like a little triangle. But I don't think we could have accomplished it with anything but this brush. So that's okay. Getting to it exactly when we need to. From there, we'll also take that darker pigment and we'll add some details through this as well. Just like that, very subtle, very subtle. And now I think we'll take a step back and move on to our final step. Now we venture into my personal favorite step, that being touch-ups. I often feel that my paintings really come together in that final, you know, 15, 10%, and this is exactly that. This is where we head back in and we fix up everything we want to. We add in additional details. Here you can see I have my liner brush. I have a fairly bright pinkish orange, and I'm going into the water adding some extra details. I'm starting on the tops of the waves and then I'm dragging it back down into that middle section. However, unlike our previous applications, I'm not really trying to amalgamate all that much. We've spent a lot of time, we've done that. We have the shadowy areas very limited, and now I'm going in with the extra highlights, the extra little piece of water that are kind of shooting up, creating an extra level of texture and dimension. And that is all again being achieved with a brighter application. I'm 
personally here opting for more of a golden orange rather than more of the pink which you'll see in the reference photo but again artistic liberties are something that make our pieces unique and as long as it's still kind of correct within the general rules of the painting I think that's a-okay here we do have a lot of beautiful golds and oranges in the sky I wanted to reflect those in here it gives us an extra hue it gives us just so much more to make this bottom area pop and again that bottom area that is closest to us that is the foreground that is where we want a lot of our viewers attention to go in that way we can lead them into the painting towards their subject that of course being the boat which is also full of detail and now that we've established as much detail as we have in it we can go back to other areas and add additional detail not being in fear that they are eventually going to be over detailed to the point where they overshadow the main subject I know where I now kind of need to stop with all of the extra detail and so we can go back in and continue to play with it and so many subjects in so many paintings are like that in that time final kind of 10 to 15 percent you're just not sure until you get up to that point because often your main subject is one of the final subjects you paint as it's again more often kind of layered on top of other things more so in the middle ground of foreground so with that here I'm following a lot of the older rules that I was in that I you know I'm looking for the most highlighted areas in the foreground I'm going for more of that triangular effect as I get towards the middle that dissipates they get wider and wider they get shorter and then as you move into the background it really is just individual lines I'd also like to note again I am mixing with the liner brush that is far from ideal it does not pick up much paint so it can't mix much paint and you also don't want a lot of paint on it either because you're using it very specifically to create the smallest applications however it's doable so if you find that you don't want to kind of rush back and forth cleaning another brush you really want to just focus I wanted to show you that you can mix with it you can make it work just recognize that you'll probably want to take off a lot of that paint after mixing unless you have a larger area to put it and then make your brush a little bit more damp and then grab more paint and then proceed to actually paint the area you want to so again it's most certainly an option here I'm continuously changing the color minorly I, I don't want a stark contrast at this point we essentially have a number of layers we have the bottom a very dark base layer then we have the more muted purple which sits on top of it then we have that purplish pinkish orange which sits on top of it and now we go in with that golden orange that is our fourth layer it's really making it pop and I love I love how this is turning out at this point I think it's really pretty though I do feel like now we need to interject some extra highlights back onto the boat we have all of this reflective light going around it's making everything this beautiful purplish pink however the boat itself is more so on the you know what we're seeing is on the other side from the light so we're seeing the shadows so it's a bit more cool I do however feel like some of those edges will catch light and that's something we will dive back into in a second that said again we are now currently on the final step so i would like to say a big thank you to you for being here for taking the time for you know making this the artistic community that it is at the end of all of these lessons i like to leave a little code word that we can use in the comments that way i know that you made it this far you are i, I think one on 12 percent that actually makes it to the end of the video so if you are part of that 12 percent again congratulations you are uh, some of the dedicated few who are going to do a really good job at this lesson and again I will give you a code word I what do we want here let's just let's go with something simple let's go with something easy incorporate the word summer 
into your comment or just leave the word summer. You know, perhaps it's a, a longing for, perhaps uh, this lesson kind of brings you to a summer that you had in the past, you know, but I think that's a, a fun word because it's not obvious to anybody who um, wouldn't know, right? It's somebody who, you know, might be looking for the word, but um, <laughs> it, it's just a, it's just not an obvious word. So I think that'll be fun. And again, I'd love to hear maybe what this reminds you of or a summer adventure you've had out on the water. I, um, I love scenes like this because I love days like this. I grew up doing a lot of camping with my parents and you just see these beautiful, wonderful things. But yeah, I, I guess I'd also like to note the background specifically the tree line in the reference photo you can't see any trees or textures or details that is entirely something that i added because i wanted to make this look um a, a little bit more friendly almost if that makes sense I, I wanted to make it a smaller setting i wanted it to be more cozy right if we don't have all of those tree implications the landmass probably looks a lot farther away the body of water looks a lot larger and i think you do lose a little bit of that warm cozy feel to it so that is something you can incorporate if that's something that you'd like and perhaps it elicits a different maybe a better emotion for you right i mean it's all uh, different for us it's so subjective so just recognize that in general when you're painting land masses in the middle ground of background if you add texture to it if you add uh, the little movements of clusters of foliage and trees as i did it's going to look a lot closer because it's going to imply that that subject is close enough that you can actually see that level of detail where if you essentially just go with more of a sharp line that has little jagged movements like what you see in the reference photo that's going to make it look a lot farther away because at that point you can't even see the detailed texture from the trees and whatever else may be on there so just a general idea something to consider something to think about uh, especially while i still continue to paint all of these highlights remember that this is the touch up section it's going to be different for all of us and you are more than welcome to touch up what i am currently doing in the way that i'm doing it but you're also welcome to go back to the clouds to go back and add more blue to the sailboat to perhaps touch up that tree line or not tree line that you have kind of in the center area there you can also go back and add a bit of a vignette you can make layers thicker you can add highlights you can make areas darker again we have a lot of option in this it's about bringing it all together uh, at this point our pieces are probably going to look a little bit different and it really is up to you though here this is exciting i am going in and i'm adding that highlight to the railings and the the safety features that we have on the boat as well as just on the top areas the areas that are going to be receiving the most light and i think that it's such a pretty addition i love the warmth on the cool subject i think that it creates a great contrast i mean you have blue and you have orange they are complementary colors and they're complementary colors because they're opposite to each other on the color wheel and they make each other pop in a very aesthetic way and now we have both of those beautiful colors together in the same subject that's by the way why the painting works as well as it does the purple has quite a bit of blue in it. We have quite a bit of orange and it just fits. It pops, it fits, and it creates an atmosphere, which is very much always the goal, right? We want to create a painting with some feeling. So here I'm just doing a little bit of a blend with my fingers and finishing it up. But again, thank you for being here. Thank you for making this such a rewarding process. I hope you feel like you learned a lot. I hope that you, you know, are excited to go out and paint. I hope that you are left feeling very positive. And again, big thank you to everybody who is directly supporting the channel up over on Patreon. You make these lessons happen. Couldn't happen without you. And I, I'm just, I love that I get to do what I do. And I love that you get to learn what you do and i love that again together we're building the community that we are so i hope you enjoyed today's lesson i will get started on the next one uh tomorrow 
and I'm really looking forward to it and maybe some spring pieces as well very soon. So I will see you soon. Thank you for being here. Best wishes. And again, have a lovely time. Stay creative.